Okay, today I'm talking about emotions versus logic in recovery. And first, let's just talk about this hair. <laughs> this is my natural wavy curly hair when I don't do it. And that is why I do it all the time. Um, but I thought I'd give my hair a little break from all the heat damage or the curling that I do. Um, so emotions versus logic in recovery. The more that you can rely on logic to help you to make your decision start recovery, the better off you're gonna be. The more that you allow emotion to get involved and kind of wedge its way into those decisions, the less likely you're gonna be successful at your recovery. So I kind of feel like emotions, all, almost all of my emotions in recovery were like negative and most of them were fueled by my eating disorder, sadly. So we had fear, doubt, anxiety, um, um, what else? Grief, grief was a huge one for me as I watched my body change. I really genuinely grieved that like I had grieved deaths before. It was very, very hard for me. Um, and when I would experience those really uncomfortable, really quite unfamiliar emotions at that level of intensity because I was like so numb prior to recovery because I just restricted and exercised to not feel those emotions that when I started recovery and I started eating a lot, those all came up really intensely. Fear being one of the really dominant ones as well. And whenever that would come up, I would just be like completely like, I was like sucked up into a tornado and like completely forgot what I was actually trying to do, which was recover from an eating disorder. And by doing that, I knew I had to, or to be able to do that, I knew I had to overcome any fear of weight gain. And so I would be, let's say I was out to lunch with friends and I'm looking at the menu and fear is just like, like just flooding my mind. Everything about like me trying to recover just went out the window and it was like, uh, uh, I'll get the, I'll get the salad with the dressing on the side, no cheese. I just spit out and I'd be like, you know, and I would realize like immediately after like, what am I doing? What am I doing? And upon reflection, I'd have to be like, okay, what just happened? Fear just like made that decision for me. My logic, my logical side of my brain that knew I needed to order the most scary thing on that menu, maybe two of the scariest things on that menu and sit down and devour all of them and then go home and eat more. That's the logical side of me that knew I needed to do that because that was terrifying to me and that's how I could have ran into my fear of weight gain. Instead, I would just in that very moment, it was almost like autopilot. It was like, that was just my default mode of just saying this eating disorder crap um, as I was ordering or choosing what I was gonna eat or coming up with excuses as to why I couldn't eat certain things. That's what would happen. And so in recovery, you have to develop a skill at being able to, to, to excuse me, at being able to decipher between what's going on emotionally and what is going on as far as like logically, what would be the best decision to make in this given moment. Um, I think it's easy for some reason, especially people with eating disorders to lose sight of the big picture. It's very easy to just kind of like focus in on acutely one situation and then do whatever you can to escape or um, avoid feeling uncomfortable in that moment. And so, as you develop a skill of getting used to allowing yourself to feel scared and doing it anyways, allowing yourself to have a million and one different thoughts going through your mind that are um, just um, escalating that doubt in your mind and just making it feel completely overbearing, but doing the hard thing anyways. The more that you feel that grief and discomfort in your body that is changing and you're never gonna look that way again and your body's just not meant to be that size anymore, that was really sad for me. It was really, really hard. And some days it felt even harder than other days. And I had to still make the recovery choice because logically I knew it was the best thing for me to still choose the scariest thing to eat, to still eat as much as I wanted to eat, to still listen to that mental hunger. If you're trying to like honor your mental hunger, but you're also taking into how you feel emotionally, those two things do not jive well together. That's not gonna happen. You are not going to be able to fully honor your mental hunger and feel emotionally good about that. So you got to decide, okay, if I really want to recover, I got to just kind of stuff these negative emotions aside. And I'm not saying like, don't let yourself feel things. Like if you want to feel grief, that's fine. Cry and cry and cry, but still eat the cheeseburger. If you want to be um, just absolutely panicking, shaking in your chair because you're not going for that walk and your body's convulsing, that's fine. Do that, but don't go for that walk. All right. So you can feel them, but you can't respond to them in a way that's going to honor or um, appease your eating disorder. And so as I went through recovery and I was able to just stay really, really focused on the big picture and just keep telling myself, I'm not a stupid person. 
and I'm trying to rewire my brain to no longer fear weight gain. And so in every instance and every time I had to make a decision, which was all throughout the day in regards to, am I going to move? Am I not? Am I going to eat this? Am I not? What am I going to eat? Should I have that? Should I have this? So many decisions throughout your day in recovery that as you continue to just ask yourself that question, I'm someone in recovery who's trying to overcome my fear of weight gain. So what would be the most logical decision right now if I'm trying to overcome my fear of weight gain? A salad or a cheeseburger? Hmm. What would be the most logical decision? Skip lunch or push it back or eat it now even though it's an hour early? What would be the most logical decision? I'm on my lunch break and I have an hour. I could go for a, a 20 minute walk and then I could go grab lunch or I could just go straight for lunch and then have more time to eat, right? Do you see how like all these little things that are don't seem like that big of a deal are huge deals when it comes to rewiring and you always need to choose the scariest option. So that's my message to you today. Let's really focus in on logically what makes the most sense to do if you're trying to recover and no longer respond or react to all of those emotions that are coming up because emotions, especially that emotion of fear is the most motivating factor to get someone to do something. It certainly was for me. When that fear came in, it was like I all motivation went out the window and I knew exactly what I felt like I had to do in that moment. Don't give in. You're stronger than that. You're smarter than that. Do the logical thing that's going to get you recovered the fastest. All right, that's my message today. Have a good day. Bye.